Welcome back to Track Talk. We have another game of commentary of 1830 tonight. We have several new players and one returning player, Jay Gould, from our last commentary, and we will jump right in. Sino will start the auction with a bid on the Mohawk and Hudson, followed by a bid from Gemini on the CNA. As previously mentioned, bidding on the CNA in an online play with anonymous players uh, is generally a pretty strong start. Jay Gould will bid on the cheap Champlain in St. Lawrence, and Stephen Yule will round us out with a bid on the Mohawk and Hudson. In the second round, Sino joins Gemini on the Camden Amboy, and Gemini will go for the DNH. Jay Gould pulls the ripcord, getting the um, Champlain in St. Lawrence and the Shukul Valley for essentially face value, and giving Gemini Lee a cheap DNH. Now we enter a bid war for the MH, and Sino is also on the CNA. So if he ends up with either of these privates, he knows he's safe for the BNO. However, if Stephen Yu is locked out of the MH here, he will almost certainly be forced to buy the BNO. So Stephen Yu is very incentivized to get the MH here, and we'll see how much he's willing to pay for it to get it. Sino, on the other hand, if he does not get the MH, has another opportunity to get the CNA, and Jemaya already having a private is in no danger, so maybe less likely to bid up. So if I was Sino, I would be um, trying to bid Stephen as high as possible on this private. We'll see how that works out. Okay, with Sino, and they're just going to alternate here. And Sino eventually passes uh, after only a bit of 140 on the MH. I think he probably could have gone a little bit higher there uh, without risking getting the MH himself. Moving to the CNA, we'll see how uh, this works out. So there was a jump in the bit there from Sino, and Jemai is staying right with him. And it is reaching uh, 235. Sino wins that, and that leaves probably Jay Gould to be left with the BNO, as he has the tide for the least amount of private income and is coming later in priority. So we'll see if the players uh, expect that to happen. So Jemaya buys it. He is letting Jay Gould off the hook here, uh, and he will par that for 100 um, for par price. So after the auction, Jay Gould, Stephen Gould, Stephen Yu, and just those two players have enough capital to par. If Sino gets the PRR, he will have enough money to par that in round one as well. So we'll see if Jay Gould and Stephen Yu allow that to happen. Jay Gould taking NYH, and Stephen taking CNO, leaving Sino the opportunity to par the PRR should he wish. He will also be going last in priority, so if these players buy too many two trains, he could potentially buy into the threes and buy the CNA in the first stock round, first operating round. Sino does elect to take the PRR, which is a pretty standard response for someone uh, winning the candidate and the giving the opportunity. Jemaya does not have enough money to float. Uh, expect we'll see him either passing or investing in other paying companies, potentially Sino, given its potential for high revenue. He passes, and we should see the rest of the players just float their respective companies at this point, which appears to be the case. So Sino, having had an uh, advantage in stock from the auction, will float his company first, meaning that he will probably have priority going into the next stock round. Jemaya is now taking the opportunity to invest after the other companies have floated. I guess he just wanted the other players to invest their money and not give them a free um, advantage on their float. Jay Gould also taking the opportunity to invest in Sino, which will probably have the highest uh, revenue in the early phases. Jemai continues to invest, but does not invest all of the money that he had available to him, so now Jay Gould will retain priority deal. The MINH uh, now has the opportunity to determine how to lay the double dip, if he's going to play it in a friendly manner for the NYC or for the BNM. The BNM has the advantage of giving him an opportunity for several very good friends in the early game, but probably less long term potential, and he will lay towards the BNM. With this opening, it would not be unreasonable to buy three two trains, but it does run the risk of allowing the PRR player to buy right into the three when it comes to them in uh, their turn. And he elects to buy only two uh, two trains. CNO will now play and goes left towards Chicago. Probably will see them buy a single two train. And that is correct. So currently, based on the number of trains, it is possible but unlikely for the PRR player to buy into the threes. And uh, he would have very little money left over, probably not enough to buy a CNA uh, for full value. He will head towards uh, Philadelphia and buys two. So he will buy into the threes. That leaves him $250, which is not enough to buy the full value of the CNA. And he does buy that. So you know he's going to be bought out here, looks like. And then does Sino drop the PRR into the brown? Uh, he does. So that leaves a company with a three train into the uh, orange shares, allowing someone, potentially Jemaya, to take over that company uh, and run a brown strategy for the rest of the game. Sino is now buying main shares. Whether or not he decides to tank these, we will have to see. It looks like he is going to take the value of Sino just one slot. Jemaya will he take over the PRR. He's passing for now. Jay Gould has very little cash, so he will have to sell shares if he wants to uh, take an action here. And he passes. Steven will sell the NYNH. Is he going to take the PRR? It looks like he will. Sino now uh, has a decision of whether or not he wants to tank additional shares, or if he wants to try and take over the BNO or float uh, another company, for instance, the BNM. He does, in fact, float the BNM and he pars it fairly high. He may be floating this and then trying to get the BNO to float as well for a quick rust of all these two trains, but uh, time will tell. Steven Yu sells the CNO. Oh, sorry, Jay Gould sells the CNO, and he will be hmm, not buying anything. Steven Yu, I expected him to take over the DRR, but it looks like he's content to sit where he is. So we'll see Sino probably float the BNM now. And Jay Gould buys a single share of the DRR. Jemaya is helping Sino float the BNM. He may just be hoping to take the value of that stock. Um, but Sino is, I'm sure, appreciative of the help. Jay Gould now also investing in the BNM. They understand that there are two operating rounds in the next set, so maybe they are hoping that the BNM will run hot early in the game. Sino continuing to just try share value. Uh, he will run out of valid investment opportunities if he's not careful. He may just buy another share of the BNM. Which he does. That does mean that he will be going last in priority, most likely, uh, which he will be. So now. Jemaya will be going first, which is nice for him. He can get full value from these shares or these stocks and then sell them down and hopefully flip the BNO. The BNM is most likely going to cooperate with the NYNH here and land a Providence track. He may uh, token there to force the NYNH to upgrade that track for him. He actually elects to pass, which means he will not be running in either operating round in this set. But he does buy a train. Actually, that was inaccurate. If he uh, buys trains here, he can lay track at next operating round and then uh, still pay out. So he may be hoping that the NYNH lays that uh, $80 track for him and then uh, he will be able to upgrade it and run. 
He buys three tree trains. That's unusual. Uh, he will, if he gets the Providence track, have the ability to run those. Two of the three trains will be running as two trains, but he will be able to run three runs with a token and the track on Providence. He also... Oh, I see. So he owns the PRR and will probably be buying one of those three trains over to uh, allow the PRR to have a three train. And YNH uh, has the option to upgrade New York or run to Providence. He may be leery of playing the BNH track for it, so he may be upgrading NY and hoping to get down into running an Allentown a turn faster, which is what he does. He only has one run as a result of that, which I'm sure he's not happy about, uh, and we will see if he's able to get himself a three train. He does not unfortunately have the money to buy the four train and rust the other players' trains. The CNO now, will we see him complete his run into Chicago? Yes, and then we expect him to uh, buy the first four train, leaving the PRR with no two trains to run. The PRR will probably lay towards Lancaster and hope to get into Philadelphia. And it does. It does not have money for a token, but it does have a train. And it will pay that out. So when you're running the PRR in this situation, uh, paying out is probably not uh, a high yield strategy. First of all, the revenue is not very high. And second of all, you only own 20% of the company and all the other players own 10%. So you're only netting 10% of the revenue. Whereas if you withhold, even though it's only $30, you get 100% of that $30 into the company. And the PRR is very poor. So I think that I probably would have been tempted to withhold there. Um, the only caveat to that is that you don't want to enter the brown phase of the market with your withhold. Um, it allows someone to steal out in a single operating or single stock action. But he could withhold and then pay out again to maintain a spot in the orange. And he is shuffling trains, so he will now have two three trains in the PRR, likely hoping to token Lancaster, upgrade Philadelphia, run both of his three trains, and withhold um, to get some more money into that company. The NM now has the option to lay into Providence. He could be more conservative and upgrade Boston, but then he will be running only one of his three trains. He does lay the track um, and will likely token so as to run both of his trains. He does. That does uh, really kneecap the potential for BNM long term, assuming that the other companies play their tokens properly. So he will be running quite lucratively here and paying out. And YNH, I expect, will most likely be laying uh, a tight turn down towards running in Allentown, given that the BNM has already laid its track for it. He does like to upgrade Providence. I hope we don't see a token, given it only has one train and it's not a very helpful token, but we will see. He does not uh, do that. So he's happy to have not paid for his track. He will not buy his privates, setting himself up for an exciting stock round. Sino now can lay the Akron tile. We may see the uh, sharp turn at straight, just to deny that for the New York-based companies, but he will now be rushing on over to Pittsburgh and eventually Lancaster. And he also pays out, and I imagine will buy in the privates. PRR probably will see an upgrade to the Philadelphia tile, a token either on Philadelphia or Lancaster, and then a uh, withhold. And he pays out. Okay. So he is not interested in running this company into the Browns, at least not in this uh, phase of the game. Jemaya, this company, this player does not have a company yet. We may see him sell down now that he has uh, reaped the reward of all these shares and start floating the BNO. He uh, is going to start floating with that. Okay, so he is just doing it in a different order, but he is selling down. All right, so he now has the liquidity to float the BNO for 100. Jay Gould, uh, he has um, just barely enough cash to float um, another company at a low par if he likes to sell uh, the BRR BNO, which he appears to be doing. So 429, and we will see. Okay, so he sold one of the shares of the NYH that have a higher par. Will he be going for the NYC or the Erie here? He takes the NYC. The NYC uh, is a little bit limited in terms of track options. It almost certainly will build uh, southwest towards New York, but the NYH has the opportunity to uh, be difficult. Fortunately, he owns the NYH, so I assume we will see some friendly track. CBNU also has cash for um, floating, and I assume we will see him take uh, the Erie here. The CPR is controlled by Jay Gould with that Champlain and St. Lawrence, so it would not be a safe start for him. And Gino is just going to buy his cheap PRR shares. Now that all the other players have sold out, he is free to buy above his stock limit. The rest of the players will most likely just be floating their corporations, which it looks like we are seeing. So we will move quickly through this stock round. Now I know that um, both Jay Gould and Stephen Yu are prone to sell one of their shares after it floats to buy a paying share, so we very, well, we very well may see that at the end of the stock round. Jay has floated his NYC, and Stephen has floated the Erie. Will we see them sell down? He does. And now Stephen Yu will take the priority and not sell his Erie. The CNO's first operation, uh, he needs to be very careful about getting into Lancaster or Philadelphia, most likely Lancaster, before the CNO, if at all possible, which he should be able to do, um, but if he gets stuck out of Lancaster, he may have a difficult game. So he's actually electing to build down towards the offboard. Uh, I think that is a mistake. I'm not a fan of that track lay for the piano in general and in this specific situation. Buys a single four, and now we will be on to the BNM. The BNM will probably be upgrading Boston uh, to maximize its revenue in the uh, mid-game here. Steven has an option to try and head south to cooperate with the Cleveland or the CNO to token Pittsburgh with both of his companies, or he may attempt to head up towards the other double O city. However, there's only two double O cities, so he will have to wait until Brown to be able to do anything productive in that second tile. So he may be heading towards Rochester to try and compete for a token in Albany, or it also opens up moving left later in the game towards uh, the second double O. NYC, I expect, will be building track to cooperate with the NYNH, given that they're owned by the same company, they're the same president. And he buys the first board and has money for the buys the last board and has the money for the first five. So we are now in the ground phase, private trains are available. NYNH, will he be building friendly track or moving around to the running in Allentown? He is building friendly track, so we may see a token on Albany from the NYNH in the very near future. CNO will continue its track towards Pittsburgh and Lancaster. And he is withholding, presumably, um, because he has priority and assumes he will be able to get into the brown, which he will. So he will be able to not only exceed his share limit, he will be able to buy all of the three shares here in one stock action, which is very efficient. PRR. He unfortunately cannot block the CNO with the city uh, on Pittsburgh, so he may just upgrade Lancaster and hope to lay favorable track at 
Allen Town. I had forgotten that we were in the round phase, so he lays the Philadelphia tile, um, and he may choose to defend that run into New York with a token on that double city. He doesn't do it this turn, there's not actually much urgency, uh, because the CNO player will have to upgrade Lancaster before able to get into that round. b and now, we are in brown, we may see an upgrade from Boston, or he may elect to upgrade the New York tile, however, he doesn't have a token to place there, so a little bit less uh, incentive to open that up. He does, just for the short-term increase in his run. Again, I think that you're doing your opponent's work for them by upgrading that tile. Now the NYMH and NYC are free to focus on expanding uh, towards the northwest. You know, uh, maybe heading towards that Philadelphia track with a uh, tile directly east. Alternatively, they may try and upgrade Baltimore here. And it does head towards Philadelphia. It has a more lucrative run as a result. You know, has money for a permanent train. I expect we'll see him buying the second five here, which he does. The Erie player can lay to Rochester just to get a run. May elect to upgrade Dunkirk to start heading into that second double city. And we'll see Rochester probably followed quickly by a token there. He declines, maybe realizing that it will take another operating set for NYNH and NYC to get over there, so just holding on to that token for now. He will get the last five train. Do any of the players have capital to bring out the six? No. Uh, Chino is closest, but it is train locked, uh, so we will not see the six come out until CPR is loaded. You should note that the CPR is available as a briefcase now, as the Champlain and St. Lawrence did not lay any track, and the uh, private has now left the game. NYC upgrades Boston just for a more um, advantageous run. And he withholds. So Jake Wolf is withholding here. I guess he is hoping to get some cash in the companies for a permanent train, expecting that the 6 and probably a D train will come out shortly. As soon as that uh, first 6 pops, Sino will be on the hook for 2 permanents, and only there's only one 6, so he will have to buy a D. It also helps him get into the yellow. NYH now has a pretty nice run with 2 trains, and he upgrades Albany, but does not have the money to token it. He may get enough with a pay, and he does. So he now has the ability to token there without any withholds. PRR lays the running Allentown, securing 2 runs into NYC. Only one of them will be able to avoid the dip, so it is still interesting to see who will get that Philadelphia token. And he also pays out. Even you, I expect, will be laying Pittsburgh and withholding here to guarantee he gets into the ground. And withholding. So Stephen Yu has not much money, but only needs 90 to buy all three of the CNO shares, and he's had uh, good success in getting some more money into this company for permanent trains. He may very well sell down in Erie to get all, those, all three of those shares, which is exactly what he does. So now Chino has the opportunity to take the CNO, CPR as a uh, suitcase, which he very well may want to do, as he's on the hook for two permanent trains and has very little company money. So he sells down his B&M, knowing that his train lock doesn't have permanent cash, and will now be presumably floating the CPR, which he does. I don't know that I would have sold down the BM that heavily. Uh, it is still a viable co company, and you don't need the cash to flip the CPR that high, but uh, not an unreasonable play. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, he is just looking for paying shares at this point. Buys the NYC. Jay Gould, again, mostly looking for paying shares. Maybe interested in the PRR as it's yellow, uh, but we will see. So he may be looking to take over the BM, recognizing that uh, with the NYH and the NYC having the BM is a very strong triple, he can withhold that uh, token from Albany and allow all three companies to run through that tile. Steven Yu is out of money and will probably be passing for the rest of the operating side round. Chino now probably be floating the CPR. He elects to buy the NYNH, so he may be just reserving the CPR here, or he may have realized that he wants to invest his cash before the other players buy all the paying shares and will just wait to float the CPR at the end of the stock round. It'll be interesting to see what he decides. Jeremiah is still just buying paying shares. And Jay Gould, will he take the BM? It looks like he's going for it. That does open up additional liquidity for Chino if he, if he lets the sell down. So it looks like Chino is just distributing his cash right now, and Jay Gould will almost certainly take the BM, and he does. So at this point, if I'm Jay Gould, I probably do not buy additional shares. One thing is out of money, but two, you just be buying your own market shares. So I would probably sit on three um, shares here. I think that everybody will be passing now except for Chino, so we'll see what he likes to do. He sells down one BM, preventing an additional dump uh, in the next operating round. He's assuming that he will not have priority, and Jay Gould will have the opportunity to do that. So that's a nice expensive move. And I expect we'll just see Chino continue to buy shares. It looks like he has decided to put the CPR, so we'll see that, which will take the rest of his liquidity for the most part. And he sells down a significant portion of the CPR for more paying shares. This does lead to an interesting situation where if another player wanted to sell down their companies, they could potentially try to steal the CPR. It would be quite expensive, so we probably are safe, but it is a little bit greedy. And it looks like he'll get away with it. So he is now fully invested. Jeremiah is only running one company, has a permanent train in it, so those uh, BNO shares are a very safe investment. BNO, speaking up, will be the first to operate. Uh, does not have much interest in track other than the Baltimore upgrade, but it will probably be too late to get him anywhere uh, good. I guess potentially he could put a track uh, token on Pittsburgh, which will secure some later game runs for him, but probably not going to be getting into Lancaster this game. So we do see the Baltimore upgrade. He now has two trains, will be running pretty well. And Erie, we will see if they start heading west towards Hamilton. I don't think there's much utility in going to Albany. I don't think he's going to be able to get in there. Uh, but now that Jay Gould owns the BM, he may want to force the token out of the NYH just to prevent the BM from having any access in the future through Albany. So just increasing his run by upgrading the double O, he unfortunately only has one run for his two trains. CPR, I assume we will be seeing this company not lay track and just operating as a uh, bag of cash for his other two companies, but there's other one company, but we will see. Buys the train from the PRR, not leaving enough money for the six purchase in the PRR. So he may be hoping that he is able to buy the first six with the PRR and then get the second six with the emergency buy from the CPR. We'll see if that works out. In terms of operating order, PRR and then the B&M, will be operating before the CNO, so that should not work as strategy, if that's what he's going for. Upgrades Albany, no token, because there's no reason to, and just running for a good amount of money. BM now, 
We'll see if he lays any track, uh, the $120 track, or if he's just going to withhold, given that he has very little investment in the company and will shortly need to permit trade. So he does spend the money on the track. That makes his run marginally better, and he will be withholding. So if uh, the CPR um, wants, it will be able to get that second six train because of that withhold. NYC now, same player. He will be just optimizing the track, really opening up the NYC corridors so that all three of these companies will have lucrative runs into NYC. So that's a very nice setup for those two companies. And he is also withholding. He's anticipating having to buy some expensive trains in two of his companies very shortly. Doesn't get quite enough money to buy that second, that first six, uh, which is unfortunate for him. PRR, not entirely sure which uh, track he will like to upgrade, but very certain that we will be seeing a six train coming out from him. I do not understand this token on NYC. I think that is a wasted token. Uh, the other companies are not incentivized to token there, and it will not block any runs. So he upgrades Lancaster, which does allow the C CNO to run straight through. Um, the CNO may lay unfriendly track on H14 to block the Baltimore and elect not to spend money on a token. Uh, alternatively, it may try and token uh, Philadelphia and Trenton just to take the more lucrative uh, or more convenient run into NY NYC from the PRR. So he pays out and does buy the six. So now the BNM is on the hook for a six train, but it will not operate before the CPR, which will have the option to emergency buy that six. So that has the potential to be quite expensive for uh, Jay Gould, who is going to be on the line for two permanent trains potentially. So, you know, we were discussing that there's some interesting decisions to be made here with the track and with the token. So he does not block the DNO out. Uh, the PRR does not have money for a token, so the CNO is not worried about getting tokened out at Pittsburgh. And he tokens Lancaster and withholds. So he will be staying in the brown, going to be getting more money into his company, which will shortly need a D-train, and uh, just going to count on stock density to carry him through the uh, finish line. You know now, I expect we will see that uh, straight tile upgraded, and he will start running to the west. He does token Pittsburgh, which I think probably you have to do in this situation. The uh, PRR and the CNO both have tokens left. You could be tokened out there, and this does incentivize one of those companies to try to token Pittsburgh just to hurt the other. So we'll see those two companies fighting for that token would be my guess. Erie now will start running to the south. He will be hoping to run back through that second uh, city on the double O tile in the next couple of turns. The NY and H, um, we may start seeing them push towards the left, towards Rochester. But again, the, they have to be a little bit careful. There's a uh, kind of a standoff on these two tiles. If the NYC or Al NY and H lay one of these tiles, the Erie can then lay the second and immediately token in Albany. Um, so they have to be a little bit cautious unless they want to burn the NY and H token in Albany, which I imagine he's trying to avoid. So he does drop the token. That makes it a little bit harder for the BNM. However, the BNM can lay a uh, a curve, a brown curve on E21, and then get into New York through the dit um, with some appropriate track lays. So not the end of the world, a more defensive play from Jingle. He um, now has $800, so if he has a 4-train, he can upgrade, and he has the 4-train in the NYC, so he may be looking for that first uh, D-train. He buys the second 6, leaving the CPR with the decision um, of basically laying track or not. If it doesn't lay track, it will uh, not have to buy a D-train, but that money that was left in the CPR will be pretty useless. The BNM now has the opportunity to get the D-train, or they will shuffle trains. He may just shuffle a train out of the NYH. Nobody else will be buying that D-train anytime soon. Actually, I'll take that back. That may not be accurate. The CNO is pretty close to the D-train and has uh, two trains to run, so it may run for a fair amount of money. It may be able to get there. He is collecting shuffle trains. PRR now upgrades Baltimore just to increase its uh, run. And the NYC does not have money for a token, but may lay that Rochester track anyways. So we'll be heading north trying to break the uh, suitcase of the CPR. Maybe not in the near future, but leaving that option open. NYC is anticipating having to buy a permanent train, so withholding. And now we will see if the CNO is able to bring out the D-train. Tokens, which will make it a little bit harder, but I'm sure he's done the math, and will have the money to uh, do the upgrade. Great, so we, first, we see the first D-train. And the CNO has a beautiful D-run uh, through New York and to Chicago. So CNO is very happy. Stephen Yu has made the right decision to invest in heavily in this company and will, I'm sure, be running this uh, for the remainder of the game. This leaves the NYNH with uh, just under $900, so close to permanent train money. So we will see that being bought without too much uh, gnashing of teeth. Final operating round in the set. BNO, BNO um, has secured its run to Pittsburgh. PRR is tokened out. Let me see the BNO heading up towards the double O city. If they were able to get a token there, that would really put a wrench in Stephen Yu's plans. He will just upgrade the Washington track. I don't know that that's that useful for this player. Just $10, I think. You want to be a little bit more long-sighted here, far-sighted here, and start preparing for the end game. Here he does lay that uh, sharp turn, and will be increasing his revenue as a result. NYH is dead set on breaking that uh, briefcase, and will uh, be buying a D-train almost certainly here. So he shuffles. So the NYH has the money, but presumably doesn't want to have to lose its liquidity for the next stock round, uh, and also... Um, can defend one of its companies by leaving no money and uh, no train in it. So maybe he's just deferring buying the D-train until the next operating round so they can buy shocks, stocks in the stock round. PRR now. We'll just be throwing away a tile there. I'm not sure that that uh, helps him in any way, but it may block that tile from being placed on E21 in the future. There's a second tile, so may just be throwing away track. The we will probably see a, another shuffle here. I doubt he's going to buy a D-train when he has so much money in another company. So just shuffling trains, we'll probably see him pay out on the NYC. He would remain in the yellow if he paid out. CPR may be realizing that its time as a trainless company is coming to an end here, but we'll be forcing uh, NYC to um, lay the track. We will see the first run of the D-Train in this game, and he uh, takes the third and final round 
city and will be running for a very nice chunk of change. So going into the fifth stock round, the CNO, the NYC, and the CPR are all free shares against the stock limit. I expect that CBU will be sitting on this uh, cusp of the brown phase for the rest of the game to the last operating round when he will just run out. Uh, players all have a good amount of money to invest, so we will probably be seeing all the shares bought uh, in this stock round, except for potentially the BNM, which Jay Gould has kind of reserved for himself by leading a train list. Jay Gould buying the last BNO share, which was at a discount compared to his market value. Stephen Yu, he is going to buy PRR. PRR has, um, I guess, a set run, but it's limited in its long term because of the tokens and Pittsburgh. However, it doesn't have a D-train, so I guess it doesn't matter that much. And I expect we'll just see the players continue to buy bank shares uh, throughout this stock round. There is a potential for a dump. However, when the game reaches its later stages like this, you have to worry what shares will you buy if you dump a company. So it may be feeling more confident in buying, uh, investing in other players' companies. Chino is probably recognizing that he will end up running the CPR and might as well invest in the company at this point. So the PRR is now sold out along with the BNO and Erie. I expect we'll see most of these other companies selling out in short order. So Stephen uh, is investing in the BNM, realizing just one share is still safe, and the company will be running for the next uh, couple of hours, so still reasonable to invest there. Jemiah has plenty of money and has by far the least amount of shares in the game, so I would like to see him investing this money, but he may find himself uh, in a very rough position at the end of the next set of hours when he uh, has much less net worth than the rest of the players, although he is technically second right now. So Jay Gould is deferring on buying any additional shares here. There are really no safe shares for him to buy other than his market share in the MINH. Okay, you know, we'll be heading west, probably hoping to eventually get into Chicago. And Erie, will he start looping towards the second BNO, or second double O city? He actually elects to join up to Albany. I guess he is not worried about a token in Rochester, which given that the NYC has no money, is pretty reasonable. He actually tokens there himself, so very reasonable to secure that and not have to worry about competition getting into this second double O city. NYNH doesn't have the money or the capital in his uh, coffers to buy the D right now without selling shares, which I'm sure he doesn't want to do. Uh, so he may be just shuffling all his cash to the NYC and hoping to get a D train in the NYC. So he likes to leave the cash in the NYNH. Huh. PR bypassing Baltimore just to get a little extra um, money on his run by hitting Washington on the way to Baltimore. The DNM here does complete that track that we discussed uh, several operating rounds, operating rounds ago and now has two runs into New York City. CPR will now be forced to buy a train. Uh, CPR can shuffle a train from the PRR, which uh, may or may not be worth it, given that the PRR has been tokened out. So even getting a D-train in the PRR is not going to be very helpful. CPR has to sell down, and now has enough to buy the D-train, and he will take it in the CPR. CPR's run is going to be very poor for several operating rounds. Eventually, we'll hope to get into that double O city, but uh, I'm sure that Stephen U will have something to say about that. NYC is withholding, and he is just hoping to stay yellow phase, because he will exceed his cert limit if that company comes out. So he has taken a yellow strategy. We do see a lot of yellow strategies um, at high level play, especially Stephen U is a fan of that strategy. as evidenced by him withholding to maintain his brown phase uh, company. So these companies are just kind of optimizing their routes um, and just throwing away track to try and prevent other companies uh, outside of the New York area from getting the track they want. I'm moving a little bit faster through this operating round. Um, a lot of the interesting track decisions have been made. The NYH, will he finally buy the D-Train? So he is now going to buy the D-Train with the NYC at the end of this OR, um, which will give him a D-Train, which is in the yellow, and potentially has uh, a pretty good route. He could have potentially done the same technique last OR, but I suppose he wanted to get some cash to avoid selling shares. CPR's first run of the game will be laying into Ottawa to head west. NYC now has plenty of cash to buy the D-Train, and is looking to expand its run by piggybacking on the track lane by the CPR. Uh, could potentially be blocked out there, but will have the NYNH operating before the CPR, so should be able to get in there. The track lay on I-17 is going to be unfortunate for his goal of getting in there, though. So maybe a far player saw that coming. So all the companies have their trains now. CNO will be just laying track to eventually allow the CNO potentially to get into that double O city along with the Erie. He's continuing to withhold. Again, he's hoping to maintain his brown shares, but he will accumulate quite a lot of cash in this company. So we could potentially be seeing a second D train coming out from Steven uh, that would be run uh, probably by the Erie in conjunction with its uh, other permit train. You know, is largely out of the track game for the rest of the game now. Erie soon will be starting to head towards the double O city. Does not. Just trying to open up the board, bypass Pittsburgh. And here we see the problem that uh, Jay Gould is going to be kicking himself about with this I-17 track being laid previously. So not an easy way to get into uh, the track being laid by the CTR, this OR. CPR will be continuing west. Again, probably going to be wanting to head towards that double O city. CPR is withholding again to maintain that yellow status. 
and he'll be the first run of the D train from the NYC, and he will be hoping to bypass Rochester uh, and get over into the double O cities. Stephen, you should be able to prevent this uh, with careful track play. Stephen is solidly in the brown uh, phase of the market, and I think we do see him starting to prepare uh, to block the uh, effort by the NYC to get into the double O cities with this track play. So he will probably pay out here now that he's solidly in the brown. But I anticipate significant withholding for the rest of the game for Stephen Yu until we get close to the bank breaking. With the bank uh, at 7,000, I anticipate us having another two sets of operating rounds. All the players are flush with cash, and they all have plenty of room for additional shares, so we will see a feeding frenzy this uh, stock round. Jay Gold has done something interesting where he's protected the BNM shares uh, by buying the train out of that company, hoping that he can you know, just invest heavily in this company and prevent other players from buying those shares. And we are seeing begin to invest in the BNM. The other players have the opportunity to invest in CPR. It does come at a $54 or $50 discount or a penalty, but they realize that it will be worth it in the long run. Stephen Yu is not, share, not scared of the dump. He realizes he has money in the CNO for a permanent train if Jay Gould collects to dump it. And Jay Gould is disincentivized, disincentivized from dumping his company because he will have very limited opportunities to buy shares elsewhere. Jay does decide to dump the BNM. Uh, I guess he thinks that the expense of the permanent train will offset the loss in shares. I'm not sure I agree, uh, given especially that CNO is sitting on $600 of cash. He also dumps the NYH, which does not make sense to me. Is he just ready to leave this game? I think Stephen is happy to buy the cheap shares. And Sino is defending the NYH from Stephen Yu trying to take this over. Uh, I mean, who would want that company? It's a free permanent So the NYH has been totally distributed amongst the other players, and Jake Gould has probably eliminated himself from contention here with these moves. Stephen Yu is now taking over the BNM, happy to buy those shares, very confident that he will be able to afford a permanent trade. And we will, it looks like, just see him continue to buy shares. So he's now maxed at 26 shares, um, much more share density than Chino is uh, nearest competitor and only $400 behind. So I think this is looking quite good for Stephen Yu. We'll move through these operating rounds a little bit more quickly. So again, by laying this track uh, last OR on G5, he has uh, prevented the NYC or the NYH from getting into uh, this double O city. So that was a nice foresight. He we thought he uh, saw that attack coming and was able to prevent it. PRR, similar to the BNO, doesn't really have an interesting track to lay anymore. NYH uh, has been blocked and still is not able to get into the CPR track either. So not many opportunities uh, for interesting track there. Just going to be running and paying out. CPR will continue to head towards that double O city. Will actually be laying towards the off board. Maybe realizes that it's not going to be able to guarantee a run. Although, yeah, it would not be able to guarantee a run because CNO can lay the double O tile and then the Erie can upgrade it away from the CPR. BNM does not have a train. Uh, may shuffle the train out of the CNO and allow the CNO to buy a second D train. So he buys the train from the Erie and will allow the Erie to buy the Bermuda train. Jay Gold now operating two trains with the NYC. Doesn't really have the track to make that very worthwhile. Uh, so we'll see. He's running for 430, which is nothing to sneeze at, but really a questionable play in terms of stuffing those two companies. CNO now trainless, and we'll probably be happy to buy a D train, which he does. So after those dumps, we now have CBU running three companies, all of which have trains, all of which have track, and he is $1,200 behind the leader, but has three shares and plenty of time to make up the difference. The CPR is kind of a non-entity in terms of revenue, and I imagine he will be able to make that up, but we'll see. You know, again, no interesting track. Erie probably heading towards that double O. It does take that upgrade. Erie has a D train, so we'll be laying that double O so that it can hit both dips and probably head over to Chicago in the long term. NYNH doesn't really have an interesting track, and we'll just be running through the rest of the game. CPR is still heading to Barry. NYC, again, doesn't have much interesting track, just running its two trains, and uh, does pay it out. In theory, the NYC may be able to get down to G13 and try and hook into the double O cities, but that should be pretty easy to prevent um, if anybody's paying attention. So, you know, just running its second D train of the game. And we'll be building track to eventually lead into that double O city. Last uh, round of this operating set. CPR is will upgrade Ottawa or Barry. Looks like Barry. Maybe hoping to eventually run down to this double uh, uh, O city, which is an option based on the way the track is currently. So Stephen finally, or sorry, Jay Gould is finally able to get this track. I'm not sure who laid the upgrade here um, for him, but now able to head over to the west of the board and increase its uh, revenue pretty substantially. So I ran for 430 last time and ran for 490 this time. So I'm very happy um, day for the NYC. It does have money for its other token as well, so it could be a dangerous uh, outcome for Stephen Yu, who's hoping to leave these doubles open for both of his uh, D trains. I'm curious who laid that upgrade for him. It must have been the PRR or the BNO. So it was the PRR. Uh, the PRR is Chino. Chino is the player that's running the CPR, so I'm not sure why he would have done that. Maybe he sees that uh, he is the leader in the clubhouse, and Steven is probably his nearest competitor, so maybe just trying to sabotage him. Chino is running for slightly less than Steven, so Steven could conceivably catch him. Um, so that may be a next level play for Chino. Steven Yu now going to be laying probably Flint. Nope. So maybe laying Flint next turn, getting back into Chicago. And will he withhold here to stay in the ground? He pays out. 
but is still in orange, so it's able to hold on to his eight shares. Chino now is on, um, in a fortunate position where he has the sun on shares. Um, this will hurt him in his goal of staying ahead of Steven. Dumps a trainless NY and H on Steven. I missed that. We'll be running two trains with a CTR. CTR doesn't really have much track to do that, but buying a Buying another permanent train will be painful for Stephen. Um, he can probably do it. I mean, certainly not at risk for bankruptcy, but he probably doesn't want to do it. Um, we are kind of nearing the end of the game. This may very well be the last set of operating rounds. That should be. Uh, so that does hurt Stephen quite a bit. Whether or not that will be enough, or if he can just shuffle trains and still have a share lead high enough to take the win, we will have to see. But that is um, a pretty good play from Chino. Jake Gould is deferring buying shares here. He may just... Well, it wouldn't be really that safe to buy the NYH, and that's the only thing available, so I guess that doesn't really give us any insight into his mindset. Stephen Yu figures he's going to be running the NYH, he might as well invest in it, and we'll probably be the only player buying shares. And we'll enter what should be the last set of operating rounds. Yuri is going to be heading over to link up with the CMO on the west side of the board. PRR doesn't have much interesting to do, although I have to caveat that by saying I've said that about the BNO and the PRR, and the PRR actually laid a track that was probably the most consequential track late in the game in terms of securing him the win and preventing Stephen um, from taking this, so maybe I was premature in that determination. CPR. Token there. Um, not the most important token, but he still has money for his third token, so um, can hopefully still get that somewhere on the west side of the board to mess up these D-runs for Steven. NYH now um, does need to buy train. Will he just shuffle trains or will he buy a D-train? I think probably buying a D-train here will not ever pay for itself, but um, shuffling will be quite painful as well. So he buys a D-train. That puts $4,000 into the bank. I think that we will probably still see the bank right here. I haven't done the math, but I would not be surprised to see that at all. BNM with, with withholding. I guess he is counting on there being another set of operating rounds and wants to maintain his massive uh, share advantage. And he also withholds here, so he is definitely counting on there being another set of operating rounds. Erie and CNO will continue to cooperate, presumably, to optimize both of their runs. He is withholding on all of his companies. Um, that is a very um, strong investment in the future for him. PRR with two six trains, running very well at 460. CPR just kind of playing games to get every last bit out of, the, out of the revenue that I can. This does preclude it from getting down to ever compete with tokens um, for these double O cities. Although it looks like NYC wants to have something to say about that. We'll try and continue to compete with Steven. Another withhold from Steven. So he has withhold something like five times in a row uh, with no train liability. So he is going last in priority, has really no option to dump on anyone. He may be just hoping to buy yet another D-train to try and extend this game, or if that, or he's just giving up. So he does buy train over and will be buying a, another D-train. So there is one operating round left and $2,400 in the bank. That probably will extend the game into another set of ORs. That said, um, Steven is now $3,000 behind Gino. That is probably going to be an insurmountable lead with just three ORs um, to go, despite having eight shares. Here he is blocking the NYC permanently from uh, being in contention for these uh, token spots. And the PRR is just running uh, its, its trains. CPR probably doesn't have any track left to build. So it does give itself the opportunity to try and bypass that block, but probably will be unsuccessful. NYC is unable to assist the CPR in that goal. Does link up uh, some expensive track to get down into Philadelphia and towards Baltimore, which will increase its run with the D-train. So now running for 550. Um, some very high runs in this game. Interesting tracking lead. Running two trains in the BNM, and doesn't really have that great of track to do it. But does manage a $410 run, so nothing to sneeze at. CNO will not be running again. Steven is sandbagging here to extend the game, and he manages to do it with only $47 left in the bank. That is really a razor-thin margin there. Well, that was an uh, unexpected extension of the game. Very interesting play. There are really no shares uh, of interest to be bought here, except for one share in the NYNH, and it looks like there will be no dumps, so we can just buzz right through. <laughs> the, the bank breaks in the very first uh, action of the stock round. He sells the BNO, not, uh, uh, which is fine. He had to do that because uh, he was, well, actually, he didn't need to do that. I'm just confused here. So he did not need to sell the share. I'm not entirely sure what the point of that was. Um, maybe figures that he's at a stock limit. The BNO is pegged at 350, um, so we'll be running for less than the NYNH. So just a small adjustment here. does allow Jemaya, um, actually, Jemaya will not be able to buy that share, so it will be going to Jay if he's still interested in playing this game. And he does. So now we will see everyone pass. Uh, this last OR is just going to be running trains mostly. Uh, Stephen, you may try to link up uh, in this double city to optimize his runs, but it's just going to be a race against the clock now. Uh, so just so we are aware, uh, Jemaya is in second place. Chino leads Stephen by $3,000. Jay Gould is uh, in third place, but probably will end in last place, um, just based on the revenue. So Stephen has a very far distance to overcome, and they were running for similar amounts in the last OR, where I believe he paid out on everything. No, he actually withheld on, oh no, he paid out on everything except for the CNO. So he may increase his revenue a little bit, but it probably will not be enough to take over Chino. And Jeremiah is running for much less than Chino and is quite far behind. So we may be looking at Chino winning this game, which uh, was not something I predicted at all. So very interesting game. Expect we will see everyone just hang out here, given that the game is going to end at the end of the uh, OR guarantee as the bank is broken. Uh, I'm going to move kind of quickly here. So the CPR is still trying to get over to the left side of the map, but will not have the cash to lay this next tile. Um, so seems like a kind of useless uh, pursuit, useless endeavor. 
The NYC also would like to link up through some expensive track, but similarly is out of cash. So do any of his companies have that cash? No. So nobody will be able to link that up. Nobody's going to withhold just for that track in this uh, situation. And we will finally begin to see Stephen pay out on his companies, I have to assume. <laughs> he has surprised me before. And we do see the brown tiles being laid. Unfortunately, it looks like he was not able to find a way to link up the two sides of the map, um, which I'm sure he's not happy about. But running two D-trains in the CNO, not something that you see very frequently. Okay. So he actually elects to link the CPR in. Um, that does give the CPR a longer route, but the CPR doesn't have the money for a token. So it helps Chino um, get a little more revenue. And it doesn't help the Yuri very much. Um, so I don't know that that will net him a benefit in the long term here. Everybody else will just be paying out. It's basically just running trains at this point. I will just skip to the end of the game and just cut out the um, uh, interlude and just see who, who walks away with it. So Chino um, wins. Steven Yu does manage to overpass uh, Jemaya, but uh, is unable to take over Chino. I think at the end, uh, Steven was just running for only a little bit more than Chino was, uh, so just couldn't overcome that deficit. Very interesting play. Uh, very big fan of that play from Chino with the BRR. Um, to lay that track and allow Steven to get in there. It didn't allow Jay Gold to get into uh, the west of the, the map. It didn't end up blocking Steven's routes, um, but a very nice attempt. Uh, I like it when you uh, are playing 18xx and you realize you have to help an opponent to hurt an opponent that's a bigger threat to you, and then that double the NY uh, and H really just, I think, sealed the, sealed the deal. So very well played um, from all the players, I think, and uh, it was a very interesting game. Thank you for listening, and we will be back with more commentary in the future.